So this is Lily of the Valley and as we can see here it's everywhere. Um, can you tell us about why we need to be so aware of this? Right, so this plant is called Pampas Lily of the Valley. Uh, it's, it has a very small white flower which you can see here. So not terribly spectacular in terms of mm. um, you know, a garden plant or something that you would plant as, as an ornamental but tends to occupy areas that are semi-disturbed or areas that have been planted with other um, ornamental plants uh, along the creeks, along other watercourses, in areas that have been semi-developed, you know. Um, it's, it's a bit of an environmental weed in that it, it really smothers vegetation. It really, it gets in and it just covers everything uh, and it ex ex uh, excludes all light penetration. The other thing is that um, there's a thing called allelopathy which goes on with this one. Now allelopathy is a chemical um, warfare, chemical warfare amongst plants in the soil profile. So it produces a chemical that stops other plants growing around it. Um, not many plants can grow in with it as well. It, uh, it is toxic to stock, it is toxic to people, you cannot eat this or, or animals cannot eat this. Um, it has all sorts of issues on their liver and kidneys. Um, and uh, it's a very, very difficult plant to control. So once it gets hold and it's in a situation like this, uh, the only real control measure is to uh, basically knock it out manually. So you need to remove all of the biomass on the top and we use a process called solarization, which is by laying down a black plastic sheet um, that actually cooks, kills all of the vegetation in the top five centimetres or so of the soil profile, which, you know, it works relatively well if the situation allows for it, but unfortunately it often grows in some of our semi-disturbed remnant vegetation. So we can't actually do that. So the only, only thing we can do there is look out for emerging seedlings because at the seedling stage, we can hit it with a herbicide and it will respond. Um, but beyond that, uh, it becomes a real issue. It becomes herbicide resistant. Um, and unless you're using really nasty stuff that persists in the soil profile for a long time, uh, there's not really much we can do in terms of herbicide control. Hand weeding is probably off the cards because it is very toxic and you will get, your, your skin will absorb the sap. Um, and just by breaking up the leaves, you, you breathe in the vapors as mm. well. So it can be a bit of an issue, um, yeah. Is it the kind of plant where birds might eat the seeds and then um, move it on? Look, Is potentially, it, it does produce a small berry, a small yellow berry. Um, I'm not sure what actually eats it, but most plants that produce berries are dispersed by larger organisms like birds or mammals that ingest that fruit. Um, and in turn spread that seed around. So it's likely, yes, that mm. it's spread by birds, but I'm not sure. I couldn't find any literature to suggest what species might be moving it around the landscape. Um, but it does certainly move around the landscape by seed um, and also by, um, in, in the soil profile. It's something that, that grows by stolons. So essentially it'll, it'll produce a, an above ground stem or even a below ground stem that roots at the nodes mm. and then new ones emerge. So it looks like a new plant, but essentially it's part of this, this larger plant. So all the little satellite plants you see around the outside, the majority of them are probably not seedlings. Most of them are probably part of this plant. Mm. Um, it doesn't often in Victoria come up from seed, but it, it, it is known to, so yep. Mm. So the theme of disturbed ground is where a number of um, these problematic weeds are going to grow so that's something that the friends of Darabin Creek can be aware of that that property development um, any kind of um, restoration work that's going on along the creek could be places of particular interest for us to make sure there's none of these sorts of weeds absolutely I mean disturbance off. as soon as you disturb that soil profile um, nitrogen becomes available in a form that plants can take up and weeds being able to grow so fast and so vigorously can utilize that nitrogen much quicker and much more effectively than our native flora does and so that's why mm. they become a problem mm. yeah. okay thank you